Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Congress requests the FAA to report on air traffic controller hiring practices. Mobile, Alabama is getting ready to assemble Airbus A320 aircraft. Pearland Mission 2 glider coming to AirVenture. I'm Brie Krause, it is June 2nd, 2015, and this is Airborne Unlimited. Last week, we reported on a Fox Business News investigation regarding new FAA air traffic controller hiring procedures and the possibility that cheating on the new biographical questionnaire was taking place. Now, 14 members of Congress, led by House Aviation Subcommittee Chair Frank Lobiondo, have sent a letter to FAA Administrator Michael Huerta demanding that he respond to allegations of cheating and other issues with the FAA's new procedure for hiring air traffic controllers. The Fox investigation challenged the fairness and effectiveness of the practice, which gives off-the-street candidates the same consideration as those who have had prior military experience or have completed FAA-approved academic programs. The letter from the Congressional Subcommittee stated in part, quote, We request that the FAA fully investigate these claims of wrongdoing by the FAA employee, including the extent to which others were aware of the wrongdoing and provide the corrective actions the FAA plans to take in response." End quote. The members have asked Huerta to respond not later than June 26. The first major assemblies for Airbus airplanes to be manufactured in Mobile, Alabama will arrive in mid-June, according to Congressman Bradley Byrne. A local television station reports that Byrne made the announcement during a forum held by the Mobile Area Chamber of Commerce. Byrne reportedly said, quote, they're bringing in the big pieces of the airplane on Father's Day, end quote. Byrne said the parts will arrive at the Alabama State Port in Mobile and then be transported to the Airbus assembly facility. While the plant will begin assembling airplanes this summer, the official opening of the $600 million facility won't be held until September. The first U.S. assembled Airbus A320 is expected to be delivered to JetBlue in the second quarter of next year. After the break, the Airbus A350, XWB, and Perlin 2 glider will show up at AirVenture. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons, easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. Concord's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high-performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concord's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concord, the heart of your aircraft. Welcome back. If you would like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. When Airbus shows up at EAA AirVenture this year, they will provide a double treat for AirVenture's attendees. They'll be arriving in the new Airbus A350 XWB test airplane. The XWB, which stands for Extra Wide Body, will arrive on Monday, July 20th with an aerial demonstration planned as part of that day's afternoon air show. The twin-engine aircraft is designed to transport more than 300 passengers on medium to long-haul operations. In addition, Airbus will also bring the newly completed Perlan 2 glider that will explore the upper atmosphere. The Airbus Perlan Mission 2 aims to set new altitude records by flying the high-altitude pressurized glider to 90,000 feet, higher than any other manned wing-borne aircraft has flown. The Airbus A350, XWB, and the Perlin 2 glider will remain on the airport at the Boeing Plaza through Wednesday and will perform another aerial demonstration upon departing on July 22nd. While parked at the Boeing Plaza, AirVenture attendees will be able to tour the aircraft and speak with members of the Airbus Perlin Mission 2. 
Every Tuesday, we're going to look ahead at some of the more interesting events in the aviation universe. Here is this week's Aero Calendar. If you happen to be around Lyon, France on June 4th through the 6th, you wouldn't want to miss the Lyon Air Expo. It's the only general aviation exhibition in France and brings together in one location the major general aviation stakeholders. On June 5th through the 7th, Reading, Pennsylvania brings us the 25th annual World War II Gathering of Warbirds event. Each day is the nation's largest and best known historic commemoration of the life and times of America's greatest generation. We hope that Waco, Texas dries out enough to allow the running of the Heart of Texas Air Show on June 6th and 7th. They're featuring Air Force Thunderbirds, the Golden Knights, Warbirds, and world-class high-flying action air show excitement and fun for the whole family. And for those of you on the East Coast, don't forget the AOPA Frederick, Maryland fly-in. For the passionate aviators and enthusiasts attending these events, there is simply no better way to spend a Saturday than enjoying all things general aviation. After these messages, Google loses one of its airborne relay stations. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Now certified Aspen Avionics single band ADS-B, ATX-100 and ATX-100G transceivers are the next gen ADS-B solution that provides the features pilots need while keeping flyaway costs low. Check it out now at AspenAvionics.com. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The NTSB is looking into an accident which occurred last month in New Mexico involving Google Solara 50 solar-powered UAV. The unmanned aircraft went down shortly after takeoff, and it's a component of Google's plan to provide widespread internet connectivity. Fanshawe College's School of Aviation Technology has added a Boeing 727 to its fleet of aircraft. The aircraft is based at the London, Ontario, Canada campus and was donated by KF Aerospace. It will be used for maintenance training. The GoPro camera seems to be the most popular accessory for vertical lift drones. It now appears that the GoPro company is going to get into the quadcopter market on its own. Details are still to be firmed up. The 82nd Aerial Target Squadron flew its final QF-4 Phantom mission on May 27th, marking the end of almost 20 years at Florida's Tyndall Air Force Base. Two of the QF-4 full-scale aerial targets took off and were shot down about 30 minutes later. During a performance by Enrique Iglesias, he reached up to capture a camera drone and took a whacking from the spinning propellers. Although bleeding, the show went on and he is recovering from his injuries. Mother always said, never put your hand in a blender or a quadcopter. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. One of the most beautiful airplanes to come from the ugly days we call the Cold War has to be the Avro Vulcan. And one of the world's most popular aircraft, Vulcan XH-558, the last airworthy example of Great Britain's famous V-Force, is about to begin her last flying season. When XH-558 lands for the last time at the end of a spectacular farewell to flight season, it will become the center of a new type of education initiative. The aircraft will be part of a heritage center so that enthusiasts can continue to visit the aircraft. XH-558 will be maintained to a high standard and will regularly thrill audiences with the famous Vulcan Howl as it accelerates along the runway. But the aircraft will no longer be allowed to fly. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage 
Have the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource.